Basil the Macedon was born a peasant sometime around 811. He spent years as a slave in Bulgaria, but escaped and arrived in Constantinople, where he began his climb up the political ladder. After years of plots, alliances and assassinations, he became emperor and his dynasty would rule the Byzantine Empire for a couple of centuries. So he went one step further than Littlefinger has done so far. Despite his name, the Macedon, he was not a Macedonian, but was probably Armenian, and his family just moved west to Thrace. However, some argue that he was a Slavic or a mix, either way he came from a lowly family, and like Littlefinger, his family were obviously foreign. Basil being Armenian or Slavic, not Greek like the ruling classes. Now the Byzantine Empire at this time was surrounded by enemies. There were Muslim Abbasids in the east and Bulgarians in the west. And Khan Krum, the ruler of Bulgaria, captured Sofia and raided the Byzantine Empire. And it is believed that during one of these raids, a young Basil was captured and brought to Bulgaria as a slave. Around 836, Basil and a group of other captives managed to escape Bulgaria and he journeyed to Constantinople. And although there's no Littlefinger connection here, you could say potentially there is some connection to Varys, a slave in a foreign land who makes it to the capital and becomes very powerful. Penniless and in a terrible condition, Basil slept on the steps outside of the church of St. Diomede, where a monk named Nicholas found him and brought him in. Later histories would recall that the monk was told by God to do so. Now there is also another major difference between Littlefinger and Basil, and that was that Basil was a large strong man who cut an imposing figure. So when Nicholas introduced Basil to Theophilitzes, he was happy to take him into his service. Apparently Theophilitzes liked surrounding himself with strong servants. As one chronicler recorded, having gazed upon him, Theophilitzes desired Basil, gazing upon those physical qualities of his that surpassed all of the others. Theophilitzes was also a distant relative of the emperor, so this began Basil's journey into the center of Byzantine political life. Basil was only his groom initially and traveled around the country with him, until in Patra in Greece, Basil fell ill and there he met Denalis, a widowed aristocrat. Thanks to her deceased husband, she was an incredibly wealthy woman, controlling over 80 domains and over 3,000 slaves. And for some reason, she decided to lavish Basil with gifts. So similar to how Lysa loved Littlefinger, she may have well fallen in love with Basil. But there's something else that went on here that needs a little bit of explaining. There was a practice in the Byzantine Empire called Adelpha Poises, essentially brother making. Some historians like John Boswell claim that this was a precursor for same-sex marriages, but this is a very controversial stance. So it's probably best to think of it like a blood brotherhood in a way, and Basil used this to get himself a number of allies. Yet, Boswell does highlight some texts which show that it could be more than that. For instance, the monk Nicholas, after bathing Basil and changing his clothes, established a formal union, and they rejoiced in each other. Then, obviously, Theophilites liked Basil for his looks, and a formal union joined them together, and Basil was also united with one other person, Danelis' son. Maybe she just wished for Basil to look after her son, or maybe there was something more. Again, Boswell's work has had a lot of criticism as he often interjects homosexuality into places it may well never have been. But what we do know is Basil formed alliances with the wealthy and powerful this way. Then with the widow's gold and slaves, he's journeyed back to the Constantinople and met up with Theophilites once more and attended royal events. One of these events was a wrestling competition which he entered and beat a Bulgarian. In fact, he apparently threw the Bulgarian about like he was a wisp of hay and made himself famous within the capital, so famous that Emperor Michael III invited him into his service. Now Michael III was just a couple years old when he became emperor in 842, and the country was ruled by regents, namely his mother and a powerful minister named Theoctistos. However, Michael had just turned 15 at this point and was eager to assert his independence from his regents, especially after he was denied the possibility to marry his mistress Eudokia. His mother and Theoctistos had already arranged a bridal show in which women from across the empire were put on show, and they selected another lady to be his wife. So Michael, who for this story we should imagine is a less evil version of Joffrey, began to distance himself from his regents, and became closer to his uncle Bardas. Bardas was appointed Caesar, essentially the second most powerful person in the empire, and then had Theoctistos murdered, 
and Michael's mother was sent to a monastery. So now the empire was run by Michael, Bardas and Photios, the Plutarch of Constantinople. Together they went to war against the Arabs and Bulgarians, and although the Bulgarians converted to Christianity at this time, the Arabs were more successful. And in 863 they killed the powerful Byzantine general Petronus. This general had been instrumental in the murder of Theoctistos and helped Bardas' rise to power, so his death weakened Bardas' position in court. Plus it should also be said that during this period the Rus sailed to Constantinople and unsuccessfully laid siege to the city. During all of this Basil had worked his way very slowly up the political ladder. He initially tamed the emperor's new horse and then was given his first title, Heteriarch or Captain of the Guard, and for his loyalty to the emperor he was given even more titles. But as many courtiers warned Michael, he is a lion who in time will devour us all. Clearly many already noticed his ambitions, especially Bardas. But this is when Bardas made his first great mistake. At this time a eunuch named Damien held the post of Parakomoi Minos, which literally means he who sleeps beside the emperor's chamber. This title was usually reserved for eunuchs given the fact that they'd be around the emperor's wife and mistresses, but as they'd share a great deal of time with the emperor, they became influential ministers. However, Bardas got him removed from his post and with Damien gone, Basil was appointed to the role in 865, maybe owing to his size. But there was another reason. Basil had already found himself a wife named Maria, but Michael ordered him to get a divorce. This is because Michael's wife gave him no children, but he couldn't get a divorce himself to marry his mistress Eudokia, as this would be too scandalous. So Basil was ordered to marry Eudokia, while Michael continued his affair with her. This strange turn of events did have some reasoning behind it. As he had no children, Michael would have allowed any children of Eudokia to inherit the throne, as they were most likely his. This was made clearly apparent when a child was born shortly afterwards named Leo. Although he was technically Basil's and Eudokia's, public chariot races were held in the city in celebration, clearly showing Michael thought it was his. But whether or not the child was Michael's or Basil's, it's hard to say. Basil, on the other hand, for taking part in this strange relationship was also given the emperor's sister Thecla to have as his own mistress. And now by 865, he was firmly within the inner circle of the Byzantine court. Once there, he quickly looked to remove Bardas from power, and Bardas was aware of the precarious position he was in, so he got Basil to sign a document, reassuring him that there was no hard feelings between the two. And Basil agreed to sign, but being illiterate had to just sign with an X. But the scheming Basil had no intention to keep to this promise, as he quickly began to warn Michael of Bardas's treachery, and soon Michael was convinced. Now there was a potential reason as to why Bardas could have been treacherous at this time though, this is because before the birth of Leo, Bardas was set to succeed to the throne, but now this all changed. So when they began preparing to reclaim Crete in 866, Basil struck and with some of his co-conspirators, hacked Bardas to death in front of the emperor. Shortly afterwards, Michael III proclaimed, The Caesar Bardas plotted against me to slay me, and for this reason induced me to leave the city. If I had not been informed of the plot by Basil, I should not have been alive now. The Caesar died through his own guilt. It is my will that Basil, the High Chamberlain, since he is faithful to me and delivered me from my enemy, should be the guardian and manager of my empire, and should be proclaimed by all as emperor. Now this needs a little explanation. In the Byzantine Empire they often appointed co-emperors, and there were a few reasons for this. One was because as the descendant of the Roman Empire, it wasn't technically a monarchy, or at least a hereditary monarchy. So appointing your son as co-emperor would allow him to inherit the throne after you die. In other cases, people became co-emperor on marrying the old emperor's widow. Sometimes they rebelled and forced themselves to be appointed. There were a lot of reasons. In total, out of just under 100 emperors, around 50 had co-emperors and around 35 were co-emperors before becoming sole rulers themselves. So this was a common occurrence. Now Michael may not have just rewarded Basil for killing Bardas, but as Basil's son Leo was most likely Michael's, this would have allowed him to inherit the throne more easily. But Michael was still the chief emperor and had found a new favourite in Basilis Kianos. He was given new high ranks and in September 866 after a chariot race, he began to congratulate Michael so much that Michael gave him his own pair of imperial boots. This made Basil somewhat suspicious and he voiced his displeasure about the emperor's new favourite. But Michael responded by saying he had made Basil a co-emperor 
and could take that title away from him just as quickly, and he even threatened to make his new favourite a co-emperor in his place. So Basil and Michael began to drift further and further apart, and sensing his position weakening, Basil struck again. After Michael had been drinking one night, he retired to his chamber and was guarded by his favourite. But the locks had already been tampered with, allowing Basil and eight other co-conspirators to barge through the door and kill Michael in his sleep. He promptly crowned himself as the sole emperor, cementing his rise from peasant boy to the most powerful person in the empire. His rule lasted 19 years and he introduced a new set of laws, known as the Basilica, which remained in place until the fall of Constantinople. Internationally, although his reign saw the loss of Sicily to the Arabs, he did succeed in capturing some of southern mainland Italy. But the problem of his succession remained. He had had an older son born from his first wife named Constantine. However, Constantine had died young and Basil was convinced that Leo was Michael's child. Basil would often beat Leo and at one point had him arrested and threatened to blind him, a Byzantine custom that would prevent him from claiming the throne. Basil also made his youngest son Alexander co-emperor but ultimately, when Basil died during a hunting trip, Leo became emperor. So here is just another Game of Thrones connection for you. A king who had usurped the throne died on a hunting trip, leaving behind a bastard on the throne. And one of Leo's first acts as emperor was to rebury Michael with full honours in the imperial mausoleum, showing to the world that he was Michael's son and not Basil's. So although the Macedonian dynasty ruled the empire for centuries, maybe Basil had no connection to the future rulers. So here is my contender for a real life Littlefinger, a man born in a very lowly position, who, through plots and schemes, climbed his way up the political ladder. And here's my question to you, do you have any better contenders for the title of a real life Littlefinger? Leave it in the comments below.